Now that you've been introduced to MySQL, the next thing that you need to do is to install MySQL itself, which will be version 8 at the time of recording, and also MySQL Workbench. This is the essential tool needed for you to be able to manage your database. So, but before we can install those two things, I will need you guys to install Package Manager. Depending on the operating system that you're using, we have two of them here that could actually help you out. We have Homebrew and then we have Scoop for Windows. But we'll be able to practicalize Homebrew for Mac for now. I don't have a Windows operating system, but I'm sure the installation should be pretty simple, just like Homebrew. What Package Manager does is to allow you to seamlessly install relatively any software you want to install by just saying go and get this software for me you don't have to go to the website to check which version that applies to your own particular system or whatnot once you say it should install a particular software for you it does the checking knows your own specification your operating system and the exactly the software that matches the operating system and then it runs for you so let's go ahead and install homebrew so I have my terminal already up here on the right hand side. This is the command that we need to run to install Homebrew. So I copy this and I paste it into my terminal. So when I paste it, I have this result. And when you press enter, you have to authenticate yourself. And it tells you that it's about to go and execute all these commands. These are the things that it's about to go and do. Then you give it the access to do that. And by so doing, system prepare to install homebrew this installation is done once and once you've done this once you have every other thing set up you can then be executing other commands to install the various softwares this is what we're going to be using henceforth to install other softwares that we want to use on our system and this can also be achieved with windows but when you are talking about windows you will use scope for windows is straightforward as well you can see the site what you just need to copy for windows is this section here that has to do with the installation for windows you open powershell terminal which is similar to the terminal on mac and then once you have that open you copy this guys <laughs> this information here and you paste it on the powershell terminal that you must have opened you can paste that there of course it won't run here because this is mac so on your windows once you do that it should just install and you should have something that looks like this obviously i already have homebrew installed on my system what it just did was just to update the homebrew that i have so the next thing is for us to download mysql i already have mysql on my system but what I'm going to do is to install Workbench. I don't have Workbench on my system. So let me show you, demonstrate how fun it is to use Homebrew or any other package manager that you, it is that you have, especially if you're working with Mac. If you're using Windows, just use Scoop. Okay, so I go here and I type Brew. That is the Homebrew that you install. But short form, instead of writing Homebrew, they use Brew as the short form. Then you say install. You specify what it is that you want to install then for us we know we want to install workbench so we specify workbench and if you don't know the name of what the software you want to install is you could actually search for the product so let's type workbench and see what it bring, brings out because there could be more than one workbench by the way so this workbench we have to see if it is my sql workbench it's not my sql workbench but let's see let's get to see what it is this is not my SQL workbench. This is another workbench. So the workbench we are looking for has to be my SQL workbench. So let's try my SQL workbench. So when you run that, you can see that it's giving us what we need here. This is the my SQL workbench that we need. And you can also see the command. So instead of you going to download my SQL workbench online manually, like so, you have to come to the download page you have to look for the one that matches your system you have to download after downloading you have to click install and then whatnot so you can see here you have two options this is already a disparity like you know you guessing yourself and guessing yourself which one you should install but with this i just put this here i copy the command what it says real install cast my sql workbench and then what i just need to do right from this point is just sit back and relax and see the installation come to life so this is the system installing this 
So you can see it's very big. This is 115 megabyte of data trying to install. And that's what is going on there. You can see the address where it's picking the, the file is directly from MySQL. So it's not giving you something, you know, big. This is also an open source project that is widely used by quite a lot of industry. But the same effect that you have here is the same thing you are going to get if you were using Scoop. Now look at how to install Node.js using Scoop. Very easy. You just do Scoop install Node.js and what do you get? It's doing the installation for you. You can see that it's similar to what I'm getting if I'm using Homebrew. So Windows, go and get Scoop. Mac, we are using Homebrew. Okay, so you can see that doing the installation, this is uh, what you do when you normally click on what you downloaded. Okay guys, so we have it done in 1 minute 53 seconds. So the next thing for us to do is also to install MySQL. I already have MySQL installed, but I'm just going to do a reload on how it looks like. Real install MySQL just to show you how it works. Once you do this, it starts the process, you know, obviously of downloading it. And I'm going to stop it right here because I already have MySQL installed on my system. So when you try to install any of the software, it gets all the requirements ready for you. And just imagine the days of .NET when you try to install a software and it tells you that you need a particular .NET version and one thing, one thing, one thing. So in this case, when you install a particular product, if that product needs other things to happen, it will make sure it gets all those things and install everything at once. So look at the command. So if you try to search for MySQL here and it will tell you how to get it installed. This is exactly what we run. And then if you say brew install MySQL, which is what we did here, brew install MySQL, it gets the version, you know, the latest version for you, and then you have it installed on your system. Okay, so I assume that you have those two softwares on your system now. When you are installing your MySQL, MySQL we install with the default username and password. We'll get to the reason for that username and password in a bit. So let's go ahead and power up our workbench that we installed. If I go through all my application on my system, I should see workbench ready for me. So I have MySQL workbench sitting right there. There's a lot of things that we'll need to touch base on. This is the first time, I'm sure you're seeing this. So the first thing that comes up is the welcome message that tells you what it is you are about to do. Remember what MySQL Workbench is all about? It's all about you having an interface to your database engine. MySQL itself is a database engine that saves all your information. This guy here is the tool that you use to manage your database. So the next thing we want to go and do right now is for us to be able to connect to our database that we've installed. The database is MySQL. The tool they are using to connect to it is Workbench. So how do you get to connect to it? Okay, it's right here. It says MySQL connections. There's none here. So you can create one by using this plus button to create a connection. And if you find yourself out of this box, you can always come here to create a new connection. So I do a plus here to create a connection. These are the details that you need to specify to connect to your database. Your database is an entity on its own that is living. They call it database server. Most of the time, it's supposed to be a single system that is just separated from every other person or every other system. The reason why we have it on our system is because, hey, this is a local system. We're just testing. We're just learning. So it's okay for it to be on our system. This can be something that is remote in another part of the world that you want to get access to. And that's why we have all these parameters. So the parameter you should just take note of are just three. So let's start with the first thing, which is our connection name. What is the name of this connection? For starters, we're just going to call it local, meaning it's local to our system, just a local connection. And um, the next thing we want to do is the host name. The host here is the location of where this MySQL server resides. In our case, it resides locally on our system. It's here local on our, on our system. By default, to access your system, you use this IP address 127.0.0.1 or you can simply use local host. Those are the two methods in which you can reference to your system. You can use this IP address 
12.0.0.1 or localhost. So I'm going to leave the default as it is. But it's a point for you to note that sometimes this number might not work. You might need to use localhost. The next part is the port. By default, the port of my SQL database is 3306. And that port can be configured during your installation of MySQL. Remember guys, I didn't show you the MySQL installation, but the installation of MySQL comes by default with port 306. The last part that you need to worry about is the username. Remember, this is our local host. Nobody has access to it. Nobody has access to your system apart from you. And the username by default is root. When you're installing by default, you have root. And I'm assuming that you didn't specify a password when you were creating your MySQL. So we'll leave this part blank. Uh, this part allows you to be able to type in your password. You can type in password here if you've created one or if you didn't have anyone. So the recommended setting is to leave it blank, not to have any password. Okay, we just finished setting up the parameters. So you can see that I didn't do anything. The only thing I just did was to write local here, which means system. But I'll just do this to them. Then you can test connection so that to see if you know everything is gonna work well. And you can see it says unable to connect. So I need to start up my server and do okay. I just started my server now because I have a couple of databases as you can see here. So and I realized that my MySQL server has is different. The port is different. Look at this port, guys. This port is 3308. So if I try to connect, obviously it won't work. So I have to change it to eight. Remember on your system, it's going to be six because you don't have this kind of settings on your system. So I'm going to try it again and voila, it's working now. I can connect to this, but I don't want you guys to see what I have here because this is running on that system. So I will connect you to seven. I have my SQL 5.7 on the system. I even have 5.6, but well, let's connect you guys to seven. So I have seven. And what I need to do is to change the port to 7. And if I try the connection again, it works. You can install as many databases as you want. Because you guys are learning now. So just focus on one particular database. Okay, so we have all these sets. The next thing is I can then do OK. So once I do that, you can, you can see the name. Say dev. The username is root. And the IP I'm pointing to and the port. We are good to go. Right now, we've successfully created our database server and connected to it. We've just created the connection. So by clicking on it, it will give us access to the database. This is the database environment where we start making things happen. So in the next class, we'll be discussing how to use Workbench to do all the stuff that we need to do. We will spend the rest of our time in this course on this guy. This is where we are going to spend most of our time on. So I'm going to be teaching you a lot of stuff about databases. These are databases we have that I've created before. This is process guide database. You can see so you can have more than one database in a database server. And remember I told you guys that database is you know grouped in rows and columns, something we call table. So that's why we have table here. But not to rush you guys, go and install MySQL and also Workbench. Let's have the connection running first, then we'll go to the next class and I'll show you what to do next.